You were cautious, I right? Was. Memory doesn't fail me, right? You're pretty good. So what are you doing? <laughs> what, what up, what's up now? I think the reason we were positioned that way is we thought the market was discounting a lot of good news or a lot of probable good news, and we were a little worried that that might not happen. You needed you needed better new better than feared uh, reports on earnings. You got them. Got them. You needed better than feared on manufacturing. Today you got them. It was a lower number than expected, but better than feared. You, you, you got it. You needed good jobs numbers or solid jobs numbers, and you needed incremental progress on trade. And the fact is that cascaded really well for markets, and that's why we are where we are today. So where are you today? We're neutral on the U.S., and we're still underweight stocks globally because of our underweight to the Eurozone. Okay, so why, we, why, are, you, just, why, are, you neutral? why are you neutral the U.S. right now? Just because of the move that we've seen, and we think some of these macro risks could play out worse than feared. I think that's a low probability outcome, but it's an outcome where the tail risk is a little higher, and you continue to need to see progression on all these fronts for the upside to happen, and I think the upside is going to be measured. I don't think it's going to be as big. All right, Tom Lee, why is Rob Seachin's positioning wrong? Um, I don't think it's it's wrong necessarily. I mean, I, I think everything that people have raised here as concerns are valid, true risks to the market. But I think the combination of, you know, the Santa Claus rally that's happening now, client positioning, uh, J.P. Morgan data shows, you know, clients are positioned the same way they were in July 2016. They're he's, bearish. he's neutral, though, U.S. stock. Yeah. And, and You're not. You like yeah. that's your pedal on the floor. Yeah. So right? I think. You like it on the Autobahn. Correct. I think that the next eight weeks will be like fireworks. I think that we could easily be above 3,200 before the end of the year. I, I, I think that's that's possible. Fireworks. That, that, that is possible, and it's probably the high probability outcome. And then you get into the election cycle and what ends up happening there. Who knows? But the underlying fundamentals are good. I think what Tom talked about that, you know, we may have underestimated was positioning. We were in the consensus, and when you're oh, in the no consensus, doubt about that. when you're There's in the no consensus, and you have incrementally positive news, you're in a drop. In, in this latest rally, you've seen one percent here, fifty basis points there, and it's been a grind, which means the fundamentalists are being pulled into the market because they're underweight. And you saw hedge fund positioning uh, in September performance was not that good in, in equity hedge. It lagged the market quite significantly. And I think you're seeing a game of catch-up well, being Tom played Lee right now. Tom thinks that you're going to move from these defensive Well, we're already doing it. into mm -hmm. more offensive cyclical yes. stocks, right? Yeah, I think even today's reports on ISM, ISM, and the jobs show the industrial cycles bottoming which means 2020 economy is better than this year. It was very close to not confirming that, by I the don't way. Know. Yeah. It really showed bottoming. bottoming? I mean, I the Chicago that. PMI yesterday stunk. Yeah. True, but, you know, semis started rallying in May, the DACs in August, and industrials in October. So three very sensitive but lead to yeah, PMIs but they're, they're, anticipa they're anticipating a change in the economic data that we're not yet seeing. And when I say not seeing, okay, yes, this ISM this month was higher than last month, but it still was below expectations.